What's going on football world? On this video I'm going to be discussing the basic coverage rules for a cover three sky. I'm going to start off by drawing an offensive formation. For this video I'm going to be drawing an empty formation meaning that there will be no running backs in the backfield but I'm going to use 11 personnel. I'm going to put my X out there. I'm going to bring my tail back out of the backfield and let's put my Y in a traditional position. I'm going to bring in a uh, third wide receiver and I'm going to keep my Z back or my Z receiver in the ball game. My flanker. So there you have 11 personnel, one running back, one tight end, empty formation. Now I'm going to number my wide receivers pre-snap from left to right, one, two, and now from right to left, one, two, and three. And if you don't know what I'm talking about as far as personnel groupings, I have done a video on that, and I have also done a video on numbering receivers, offensive receivers pre-snap. And so you can go back and watch any of those videos and um, kind of see what I'm talking about in depth more as far as those, those two terms go. Let's say the defensive huddle call is a 4-3 over, cover 3 sky, and so out of the out of the break and while aligning, my based upon the rules I use, I would have my defense set the strength to the right. So this would be a right right call, meaning my weak side defensive end or five technique would go to the weak side C gap. My nose guard or one technique would go to the weak side A gap. My three technique would be over. There's the four three over over the strong offensive guard in a uh, three technique or a strong side B gap. And then my nine technique would be on an outside shade of the Y and responsible for the strong side D gap. There's my four man line. Let's start talking about alignment rules and coverage rules and coverage responsibilities. Uh, let's go ahead and discuss the will and the strong safety who I always designate as a dollar sign. They are going to be outside. They are going to align and cover outside leverage of number two of the number two wide receiver their side and most of the time the strong safety and the will are opposite and so therefore they can get outside of both the number twos to their side so they're going to be outside leverage of number two their side and they're going to carry number two through the zones carry number two from the curl zone curl to the flat so I'll read that all again to you outside leverage of number two their side and they're going to carry number two curl to flat so if we align these guys the will and the and the strong safety again four three over cover three sky I'm gonna put my um, my will linebacker and my strong safety five yards off of off of the man not off of the line of scrimmage off of the man and so this tailback looks like he's about two yards in the backfield so this would be one two three four five outside leverage number two so my will linebacker would be sitting somewhere there the strong safety again five man's off five five yards off of the man one two three four five outside leverage of number two let's recount that one two three four five outside leverage of number two my strong safety would be sitting somewhere there why are they sitting outside leverage they're going to want to funnel everything inside to the inside linebackers and um, and into the uh, the free safety in the middle of the football field so they're going to funnel everything inside um, and then your inside backers you'll see are going to push things out.
let's move into our mic. Let's talk about Mike and Sam. They're going to be inside leverage inside leverage of number three to their side. Number three, their side. And they're going to carry number three. They're going to carry number three through the hook to the curl. So again, you have we do have overlaps. I like to have overlaps because the way I coach it and how I explain it is a good zone defense looks like man defense and a, and, a, and a good man defense looks like zone. And so when you overlap those zones and you're talking numbers, you know, your zone coverages are going to look like man coverages and your man coverages are going to look like zone. And uh, the only people that are going to know the better or the wiser are going to be you and your players. Based upon the fact that the will had to break the box to get outside of number two, we're going to get a bounce call. That's going to move Mike into a weak 35, and that's going to move Sam into a strong 35. Three technique, five yards off the ball. I've also done a video on linebacker techniques. You can go back and watch that as well. Um, as you can see, based upon alignment, Mike does not have an immediate number three to his side, and so he's going to want to uh, just play the hook and the curl kind of loose, but look for anybody attacking the hook and the curl. Um, but you can see Sam has an immediate number three, and so we'll we'll talk about that more when we get into the diagram portion of the video. Let's talk about the uh, the corners. The corners. They are going to be outside leverage. Outside leverage of number one. Outside leverage of number one to their side. And are and are responsible for to their side and are responsible for the outside the outside one-third of the field the outside one-third okay and then you finally have your free safety I'm just going to write free you have your free safety he is going to be in the middle of the field middle of the field responsible for the deep the deep middle third deep middle one third so let's put our uh, corners I like to put my corner seven yards off the man outside leverage number one so there's five yards six seven so this corner would be seven yards off the man outside leverage of number one this corner the Z is off the line because he cannot cover up the tight end so we're going to be seven yards off of number one here so one two three four five six seven so this corner is going to be sitting somewhere right there but he's still outside leverage of number one we don't want to get just because we're playing cover three at least in in my uh... philosophy uh, just because we're playing cover three we don't want to get beat on hitches and 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 stop routes and that type of thing so i don't get those guys too far off about seven yards is max um, they do bail out when this when at the snap of the ball but I don't want them want them to be too far off that receiver, um, so that stop routes, bubbles, screens, and that type of thing don't hurt uh, the defense too much. And then my free safety is anywhere between 13 and, and 15 yards, depending on down and distance. Uh, obviously, I'm going to go ahead and box these guys up, and I'm going to make some connections here. 
So, the red, I'm going to box up my corners. One, my free safety. Two, and my other corner being three. Therefore, we have a cover three. We have three guys responsible for the, the deep thirds. The corners are responsible for the outside thirds. Free safety is responsible for the middle third. And if we went ahead and divided this field because the offense formation is right in the middle of the hashes, if we divided the field in thirds, so we would divide it right up the hash marks, I'm doing that in red, you can see the corner the corners are responsible for their deep third on the outside and the free safety is responsible for the middle third. Therefore you get your cover three. Where do we get our sky call? We get our sky because our strong safety, S for safety, strong safety, that is our sky. We are rolling a safety down into the box. And uh, a lot of times Defensive coordinators will run a sky in order to get uh, an eight-man box against the run. Um, but uh, that's why we call it a cover three sky. You have three three guys responsible for deep zones, and you have a, a safety, in this case the strong safety, rolled down outside of number two um, to play one of the underneath zones. Let's get into the diagram portion of the video. Let's say one runs a vertical of some kind and we'll go ahead and put him running a vertical there let's get uh, let's get number two let's say let's say the tailback is going to just run it out a simple out so he's going to press about five to six yards and run the stripe let's say that the Y press is vertical Let's say the Y press is vertical right up that seam there. Let's say the two runs an out. So he's going to run five, somewhere between five and seven yards and run the stripe. And then let's say the Z. Let's say the Z press is vertical. Let's try to redo that. And let's say the Z press is vertical right, right up the football field there. All right. Let's talk about the rules. Let's go back to the will and the strong safety. So we said will is going to be outside leverage of number two, and he is responsible for carrying the number two receiver curl to flat. Uh, again, I did do a video on underneath zones. It has the same template on it, and you may want to go back and watch that. But the curl is right here, and the flat is right there on either side of the football field. And so uh, we're always going to cover the deeper zone first. And so at the snap of the ball, um, this, this will linebacker would, would sink into the curl. It's more of a straight drop because he's already sitting in the curl. And he's going to settle there. Okay, so he's going he's gonna to take, take care of this curl right in here. And he's going to watch for guys running through that zone. Same thing on the backside, the strong safety. He's going to stay outside of number number two. His drop is more straight back. He's going to drop into the curl, and he's going to settle down. He's going to get his head on a swivel, start looking for guys, offensive receivers running through the, through the zone. Now, you may be saying, well, you have both number twos attacking the flat, and, and the uh, Will and the strong safety are supposed to be playing curl to flat. Well, we are going to also be reading the eyes of the quarterback and once that ball is delivered to number two in the flat we may have we may have to have that will come out of his drop plant and drive and uh, get down to the flat that's why we say curl to flat let's cover the curl but then get to the flat so if, if the quarterback would throw to the number three wide receiver over here which is actually number two as far as the numbering system and they throw that ball out to the flat that strong safety is going to plant drive and get down to the flat so it's curl to flat
outside leverage number two, cover the curl to the flat. All right, let's look at our Mike and our Sam. Let's look at Sam first. So he's going to probably get some type of read step. And then after that, we want to open up outside. And he wants to stay inside. He wants to stay inside of number three and carry to the hook to the curl. Well, there's no need to get to the curl because his hook's being threatened. So he's going to probably carry that number three receiver to right about there to the top of the hook, which ends at 14 yards. And so that Sam is going to stay inside leverage of number three and take care of that threatened hook right there. Mike on the other side does not have a number three, so he's going to open up at a 45. It's more of a straight back drop. There's nobody threatening the hook or the curl, so I would just have that that Mike settle down there. As far as a cover three, um, when you're running it with a four uh, in a four three over, you're only going to have one, two, three, four underneath zones covered. Versus like a cover two, you're going to have five underneath zones covered in a 4-3 type look. Now depending if you're running a, a 34 or uh, something like that, you could potentially have 8 in coverage. And so, but and we could talk about that more later on another video, but out of a 4-3 front playing a cover 3 or a cover 2 with a cover 3, you're only going to cover 4 underneath zones. With a cover 2, you're going to cover 5 underneath zones. So something to consider. And you always have to know the strengths and the weaknesses of every uh, zone defense. So those are the rules for your Will, your Strong Safety, your Mike, and your Sam. Let's take a look at our corners and our free safety. The corners are outside leverage of number one to their side, and they're playing the outside third. So the corners' eyes are going to be on number one. Because this number one is pressing vertical, this cornerback's responsibility is to simply stay on top of uh, stay on top of this route and uh, stay in between stay in between the sideline and the man. And what that does is that that's going to force that ball to go in between the safety and the cornerback. If that quarterback was to throw it to the X, that's going to force that ball to be in between the corner and the free safety and that and that's fitting it into a pretty tight window now uh, it all boils down to one-on-one -on -one football but the free safety is going to be in the middle of the football field and he's going to want to kind of triangle uh, as far as his, his eyes he's going to want to triangle number twos on either side and the quarterback and uh, if this free safety is any, any good he's going to see that he's only getting one threat from the from any of the inside slot receivers so if he's kinda if his eyes and his peripheral vision are looking at both number twos he's gonna recognize that both number twos uh, run shallow routes or short routes and he's gonna see number three press in vertical and so he's gonna have to he's gonna have to stay on top of uh, of number three here so he's he's taking he's taking care of that middle third and he should be on top of all the routes so he can run over to help on either of the number one wide receivers or make a play on, on the seam coming from number three. But right now, his, his immediate threat is number three running, running right up the middle of the football field. But if he's playing deep enough and he's the deepest man on the field, he should be able to run over the top and help out on, on any of those vertical routes. Same thing for the corner on this side. He's playing outside leverage, and he's going to want to stay on top of the Z of number one on that side. So in this situation, it's even. We have three verticals for our three deep cover guys. Um, one of the weaknesses of the cover three is if you get four verticals, two, two verticals running up the seam, and two on the outside, it's basically four on one knocking off the top of the defense. So 
you know, again, know the strengths, know the weaknesses, and uh, figure out what you're trying to stop. But uh, a cover three sky does get a safety down in the box to help out on some run as well. So in this type of formation, you may not want to run a cover three sky. Um, but I always like to put the defense in the worst possible situation to show that you can cover most things. Again, this uh, video has been discussing the basic coverage rules of a cover three sky. And uh, I hope it's uh, improved your knowledge of the game, whether you are a player, a coach, or a fan. If you uh, would like to see a video topic in the future, leave a comment in the comment section of the YouTube page or email me at xsandos.cs at gmail.com. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and uh, I appreciate your time, and there will be more videos to come.